Hello and welcome to the first discussion in Sociology 103, Sustainability and Society. All right, so I want to start this uh, class by having you think about this political cartoon and what you think it means. So go ahead and please, please press pause and I want you to really think about what this cartoon is saying as it relates to sustainability. So go ahead. Okay, so a few of my thoughts. Um, first of all, it's important to point out that the this cartoon is indicating that the person is painting the red smokestacks green. Okay, so it's not the taking green smokestacks and painting them red, it is red painting them green. So what does that mean? And so this is something that's often referred to as greenwashing, and that which is something that we will go over in more detail this semester. But greenwashing is basically taking something that's not sustainable and making it appear to be more sustainable, whether it's through advertising or messaging or whatever. Okay. And a corollary of this and something that's really, really important to think about, and I want you to continue to think about this semester, is that sustainability and green have no single definition. And we'll go over this in more detail in this lecture. But uh, there's no single uni you know, universally recognized definition or somebody that says, you know, if you say that your energy or your smokestack is green, there's no one saying, well, actually, it's not. There's no definitive person or body or organization that says you can't say that and so that's really one of the big problems that we have today is that a lot of people um, want to be sustainable they want to appear to be sustainable but the key is to figure out whether or not it really is sustainable and that's one of the main purposes of this class okay so here's another cartoon um, and again if you want to go ahead and press pause and read through this and see what you think it means so go ahead and press pause and so this one is is it's very similar um, to the previous one, at least in theme, and basically what this is uh, meant to be funny. Um, and so what it's showing here is that, you know, as the years progress, we go from 1960 projecting to the future 2140, and this on the y-axis here is the frequency of the use of the word sustainable. So what it's saying is that as we go through time, people are using the word sustainable more and more and more, and then there the it's projecting that again this is supposed to be comical that you know by t about 2100 all of the words that we use in the english language are just or all of the sentences are just the word sustainable over and over again and again this is not a serious cartoon but the the really important thing here again is this term sustainability you've probably heard it in a lot of different uh, places and contexts it's used a lot and it's easy to sort of lose meaning if there's again there's no single definition so if you just hear this term over and over again sustainable food sustainable clothing sustainable energy whatever so you hear it over and over you risk uh, you run the risk of the term actually losing meaning so again that's one of the main purposes of this course is for you to actually understand what sustainability means and and, and you know what it doesn't mean okay all right so <clears throat> On to today's sort of overarching questions. This is a very basic introduction to sustainability. So we're going to kind of go over what is sustainability. Is sustainability just an academic topic? So obviously this is a class on sustainability, um, but what I want to sort of explore whether or not this is this um, uh, the content of the class is actually applicable beyond the class. Also, how is sustainability defined? There are a number of definitions that are out there, and um, we'll focus on um, what the three E framework is. Okay. All right. So first of all, <clears throat> what is sustainability and where do we see it? So I want you to think about: is this is this a popular? Is this a relevant topic? So I want you to go ahead and you can press pause and you can Google sustainability or green. So pick up, you know, open up a web browser and uh, Google sustainability or green or sustainability development and see how many results you get. So go ahead and do that. And so I just Googled it, and I came up with 204 million results for sustainability. So not all of those are you know, related to the topic at hand, but it just goes to show you that their sustainability is everywhere. It's all over the place, um, and we see it all the time. Okay, so it is becoming an increasingly popular term in many sectors of your life, academia, politics, pop culture, and so forth. So what I want you to do, again, I want you to press pause, and I want you to think about some general places or context you've heard about sustainability, or the term green. So where have you heard it? you know in your life when you're out you know out in the world uh, or online or wherever where do you actually hear the term green or sustainability so these are just a few um, 
uh, sort of general and specific places that you, you probably have heard about sustainability. You probably remember the BP oil spill that happened a few years back. Um, that's a big sustainability issue. And now BP has actually rebranded themselves. They're, this is a petroleum company, uh, and they've actually rebranded themselves. You know, this is actually their logo. It's green. It's like sun. Um, and so they're kind of, again, this is kind of a greenwashing type of thing. Um, so they really kind of uh, tried to portray this message of sustainability. You've probably heard about sustainable energy, whether it's wind or solar or hydroelectric um, or nuclear. Um, hybrid cars, um, many of you probably may remember that it wasn't long ago that it was it was unusual for someone to have a hybrid car. You know, in the early 2000s, it was very unusual. Now it's very commonplace. So you hear about this sort of green transportation and so forth. Um, sustainable business is something that pops up from time to time. You may, may have heard of green businesses. Um, and then you have recycling, which is a big, uh, very common now in the U.S. and across the world. Again, not too long ago, you know, a few decades back, that wasn't so common. And then food has become a huge topic, whether it's organic food, uh, genetically modified organism, organisms, local food, and so forth, okay? So there, there's all kinds of places. This is a, a very tiny sampling of places that you hear about sustainability. But again, just to demonstrate, um, it's all over the place, okay? So you hear the term a lot. Um, it's out there all the time, and it's used in a bunch of different contexts. So let's think about, let's start to dig down into this um, belief, uh, notion of what is sustainability. So, you know, you can go ahead and think about how you would define sustainability. Um, so we'll start at the very basic level. So what does it mean to sustain something? And so if you look at, you know, the dictionary definition, uh, I understand that this uses the term sustain in the definition, in the, um, in the definition, um, but capable of, of being sustained. So we kind of know what it means to sustain something, right? It means to, to, to make it last and um, to keep going. And that's actually a really, really good place to start to think about sustainability. We don't have to get into all these, you know, sort of heady and deep definitions of what does it mean? Where is it? How do we apply it? We'll start at the very basic level and think about this. If you're doing something, you want to think about can this thing continue to be done for the foreseeable future? Can it be sustained over time? And that's a really good starting point for thinking about sustainability. Can you keep doing what you're doing for the foreseeable future? And that's a really good starting point to think about sustainability. So let's just go through a few examples of how you can sort of think about this and apply this very basic definition to um, common uh, and, and uh, topical issues. And so this is getting more into the, again, is this an academic topic or is this in the real world? So um, <clears throat> I'm recording this in January of 2018. So there are a couple of very recent um, news items that uh, involve sustainability. So there was a very recent, uh, this is in early January 2018, there was a bunch of mudslides in California. Okay, this has been kind of all over the news recently. And so let's think about, okay, so from a sustainability perspective, let's kind of dig through some of the facts here. So what caused them? I mean, really it was heavy rain. Um, and again, there, there uh, at this time there have been it was a really heavy wildfire season in California. And so, okay, heavy rain after wildfires. And the problem is when the wildfires happened, it uh, destroyed a lot of the vegetation. And so when the heavy rain came, uh, there, it wasn't able to soak into the ground as much as it otherwise would have been. So the question is, what caused the wildfires? So here's the thing. Wildfires are very are natural. Wildfires have happened throughout the history of the world. Um, but dry conditions made it worse. So climate change at this point um, it likely had something to do with it. We're not sure if, if it was had to do with these specific fires. But the um, the point is that climate change is likely to increase these issues. So that's one connection to sustainability. If you look at climate change, so again, can can we keep doing what we're doing? But the really big, I think, and and probably more a little more obvious point is that we know that wildfires happen. And this map actually shows you wildfire risk. You don't have to get into dirty details here. But basically, the red is very high risk, and then the green is, is low risk. OK, so this is a map of California. Here's Los Angeles. we got San Francisco, Sacramento. So you can see a lot of these heavily populated areas, like Los Angeles, are very near high fire risk areas. And so this is not a California issue. This is, a, you know, a global issue, and certainly in the U.S., especially in the West, we know that certain areas of the country are prone to wildfires, and yet we continue to build um, neighborhoods and settlements in these areas. 
Now, this is a beautiful part of the country. I, I certainly don't blame anyone for wanting to be there. But the, it, the question remains, can we do, can we keep building um, neighborhoods in areas that are prone to fires? Is this sustainable? Can we keep doing that for the foreseeable future? The fires are going to happen again, and we're going to have other issues um, uh, pop up again. Uh, and so that's a way to think about applying sustainability beyond the class. I mean, this is, in, in this case, a very recent news issue. And this, and this is a real image. It's not doctored. It's not Photoshop. This is now a very famous image of people. I don't know if you can see this, but people are golfing in California when these wildfires are raging behind them. People are seeing this as kind of symbolic of the problem today. People are just sort of, uh, um, you know, blissfully glowing on about their daily lives as the world around them burns. Um, and so uh, a very fascinating photo, I think. Okay, so again, uh, a recent topic. This there was a lot of flooding in in Houston. This is flooding in Houston, Texas, in uh, 2017. Okay, and so let's think about what caused the flooding. So it was heavy rain. So again, this was a, it was an unusual rain event. Okay, um, but again, it was caused by a hurricane. Hurricanes happen. They've happened throughout human history. But a, a really a, something that really contributed to the problem um, was that in Houston, which is this huge sprawling city okay and the th this is a classic sort of suburban sprawl okay and so as you um take what was the natural environment you have you know uh, grass and trees and farms and wetlands and so forth they are able to absorb water right and so once you build these cities you have your concrete you have your pavement you have your backyards that aren't as absorbent so as you increase the amount of impervious surfaces the water's not able to really soak into the ground, and that actually made the flooding much, much worse. Okay, and so as this article, you can click on the link on your on your um, PDF, states the the hardest part of managing urban flooding is reconciling it with Americans' insistence that they can and should be able to live, work, and play anywhere. So it's this issue where, again, we know that flooding can happen. We know that. That, is, that building up these cities is going to make it worse, and yet we continue to do that. And again, I don't begrudge anyone for living there. I understand that um, you know people wanting to move there, but the problem is we know that um, by doing this, we're actually going to make flooding worse. And again, climate change is likely to cause more of these events, so there's another connection there. And this, uh, you don't have to get into too much uh, detail here, but this basically shows you the people per square mile in different cities. So like New York has a lot of people per square mile, and then down here is Houston, and there's less people per square mile, which means it's really spread out, okay? And so the overall question here, is this sustainable? So these are actually pictures of Houston. You can see this massive suburban sprawl, okay? So you get these neighborhoods like this. Um, again, I know people live there. I, I don't begrudge people for doing it, but we have to think about: Can we keep building our neighborhoods like this moving forward? Is it sustainable? And um, one last example here. This is uh, again in uh, December of 2017. There was a huge tax cut that was passed um, by the by um, Congress and the president. And this is a, a chart. And again, you can click on the link if you want to. This is a chart showing where the benefits are going. Okay. And so this is basically lower income people, higher income people. And as you can see, as a percent of their income, most of the benefits are actually going to the wealthier people uh, in the US. And again, you want to ask yourself, is this sustainable? And this is a chart, and again, you can click on this link if you'd like to, but this shows the red line is the percent of all of the wealth in the United States held by the top 1%. So this is basically the, the very rich among us in the US, okay? So this is 1913 through uh, the mid, you know, the uh, 2010s. So this is the very wealthy, and this is the bottom 90% of the population. So you can see in 1913, the bottom 90% had about 25% of the wealth and the top 1%. So this is 1% of the people held almost 50% of the wealth. 90% of the people had less uh, less than 25 percent. It just tracks it through time. So in the 40s, um, after the Great Depression and the World War kicked in, and then this was kind of the rise of the middle class, and then it's actually increasing, and the overall wealth, uh, the percent wealth of the top, of the richest folks, was decreasing until this is the 1980s. Okay, so economic policies, starting with Reagan and then moving forward in the U.S., you can see that the wealthy among us started getting more and more and more wealthy, and the bottom 90% uh, 
relatively we're getting poorer and poorer. And so the question is, is this sustainable? This has become a really big issue nowadays. Um, and some issues with this are as you have you know, economic growth and you have people with without much money um, that continue to drop in income or at least relatively drop, uh, as people have more money overall in the economy, inflation occurs, so it becomes more expensive to live. A really big problem here is that a lot of our system, economic, political, social, is based on trust. Okay, so we trust that we're getting a fair shake, that people are, um, that you know, you have this notion that if you work hard, you can get ahead and so forth. Well, once you know, as as this inequality increases, people start to lose faith in the system, and that can cause some issues. It also turns out the data show that this increasing inequality actually undermines economic growth in the economic system. And a big problem that's popping up now, at least a lot of people see this as a problem in sustainability as well, is that we're starting to concentrate more and more power with the wealthy. So you look at especially political power where you have things like, you know, super PAC organizations that um, are very, very influential um, in elections. And then as you elect, wealthy people elect uh, politicians and the politicians are then beholden to the wealthy people and it kind of causes this little bit of a spiral. So this has become a really big issue. Um, and again, is this sustainable? Can we keep this spread going? Is it, is it, is it our society going to be able to continue as we do this? Okay, so just a couple more um, issues and I'm going to go through these really quickly in the interest of time. Um, if you remember the Bernie Sanders campaign, and I'm not advocating for him or anything else, but his main issue was really economic inequality, which is a major sustainability issue. Um, we had a Zika virus, uh, which was in um, 2016 and 17, that became an issue, it's particularly impacting low-income people um, in, in lower-income countries. Uh, if, uh, with climate change, uh, we know for a fact that the climate is warming, so that's become a bigger issue. Um, <clears throat> Again, you can click on all these images and, and go to a link, but this was uh, an issue that happened um, in uh, 2014 where the whole entire water supply of the city of Toledo, Ohio was poisoned by toxic algae, which was caused by runoff from local farms and sewage plants. Um, so a town, a city of, uh, I think, five to 600,000 people couldn't drink the water because of the way we're farming. Um, if you probably remember the Fukushima uh, disaster, which happened in 2012, so that's some issues. Can we continue to use nuclear power? Uh, and then if you probably a lot of you remember Hurricane Sandy. Again, hurricanes happen. We know that. Uh, the bigger question really is, can we continue to build our towns and cities the way we are building them?